Mark Harris will come in. We're going to give him 10 minutes to do uh, a radio show. He believes he should get the slot after I leave to go to satellite. And we told him we'd give him 10 minutes to give us something of the Mark Harris radio show. That's nice of you. Not a lot of people get that opportunity. I got to hear it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Is he going to play wait. music on his show? He's going to have some music, yes. <laughs> All his. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. <laughs> He's right in tune with the audience. I believe that somewhere in the dark of night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray. He's pretty much in tune with everyone if you're doing a radio show in the 30s. <laughs> I don't think he was ever in tune. Yeah, even then it's a stretch, I think. <laughs> then he keeps sending us uh, tapes because we asked him to send us if he has anything, any kind of sound effects he wanted us to put, you know, get ready for his show. But he sent us his tape. But it, it sounds more like his actual radio show. Oh. It's weird. He started doing a radio show into oh, the tape. Go to number two. Uh, cut, it's on CD2. Go to cut two. Is that what it says, uh, like, drama queen or something? Yeah. This is uh, what a show is going to sound like. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God you're not a teenage drama queen. I My ex that. what? That's his daughter. He's going to have guests. This is oh, his... So his daughter is acting as a guest, or just no, no. is she going to have his daughter? She no. might even be in the role of Robin Quivers. Yeah, no, no, that's the show. The show is Mark and his daughter. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's going to be giving them advice. Movie. Well, thank God you're not a teenage drama queen. I My like ex-wife called me a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, too. I am? In what way? Tell me. You overreact. You dwell on things. You're a bitch. Things. You throw things out of scream and I have scream? PMS. What do you mean? Rebecca! Does that at least... Oh, my God. More like Ozzy and Harriet, except Harriet and Harriet. I I'm liking the daughter. It's him I can't stand. Hey, hey, Howard, you know what? There's one really creepy thing on there. I think it says uh, he asked his daughter if she's still a virgin, and so it's talking to her about it. Hmm. How old is his daughter? 18. Mark and daughter on virginity. Yeah, and, and one of his daughter's friends is uh, there with him, okay. too. Oh, good. Okay, we've talked about the jobs and the school. Um, we could talk about sex. Are you girls virgin? Yes, yes. Are you the only two in high school? No. One no. of the few. There are one of the few. Right. Um, are you girls virgin? What's that all about? Not saying, are you virgins? I don't are know. Are you girls virgin? I don't know what that's about, that's but that's him. That's the hip way to ask. <laughs> are you girls virgin? <laughs> That's her dad. Virgin to what? She's a gay dad. That's like, are you Catholic? She doesn't just have a gay dad. She's got the gayest dad on yeah. the planet. I'm dying to meet her. I, yeah. got, I got a million questions for her. Are you girls virgin? <laughs> Is this his real daughter? His, like, biological daughter? Yeah. Yes. He's got three kids. Oh. Something like that. Do you honestly look at it as uh, it's a better thing to be a virgin than to just sleep around? This is really creepy. Man. Do you actually look at it as a better thing than being a slut like your dad? Why don't you just take it from... I can't even say what I want to say. There's no evidence that Mark is a slut, Rob, and I'm going to have to stand up you know, for him. We have to ask his daughter what she knows about him. Like, Does she know that you know he had a testicle lift? And <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does she know? She reads the papers, of course. Yes. No. No, why? Because, I mean, eventually you're going to do it. That was very good. I'm very surprised. This is enough of that. Otherwise, we're just going to have two screaming virgins on radio. So let's take some call-ins now, and let's discuss virginity, and at what age you think we should at least enter into sex. Wow. Enter into sex. Should at least enter into sex. Man. Who even knows what he's talking about? That is creepy. I've never met a guy who could take sex and make it boring. Right. He did it. <laughs> He talked to two 18-year-old virgins and made it the most non-sexual thing in the world. And he is convinced that if he takes over this show, that it would be the biggest thing ever. Oh, it'll be a juggernaut. They've got to hire him. I, I, might, I might even listen to it. <laughs> He's good in small doses, I think. Have you girls decided to be virgin? Are you the only two? Are you the only two? Are there more? <laughs> See, Mark was on Larry King the other night, and he was saying how he's got a huge meeting with Viacom today. But I think that meeting with Viacom is with Vinny. Right. Yeah. He thinks he's meeting... Yeah. Sumner Redstone. Right. 
What are you doing with your life now? Well, it's kind of, that's kind of a tough act to follow. Being with who's the broad? I, I forget her I, name, but she works on court TV oh, a lot. Nancy Glass. Yeah. Oh, she's filling in for Larry. Nancy Glass. I don't think that's no, it. No. No. Oh. Oh. She's that oh, former prosecutor who's always screaming about you know court cases. Is she filling in for Larry? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good gig. <laughs> Looking for my next wife or you know, husband. <laughs> you know, that's what um, you're working on. I do a lot of writing. I conceive shows and <laughs> you know, just pitch something. And I'm having a meeting with Viacom. They're uh, having uh, launched this coming February 2005 a gay channel. Now, this gay network. Viacom is? Viacom. Mm -hmm. And it's called Logo. Mm -hmm. Now, it's open to all viewers. It's not going to be with smut. And I wrote myself a night show, seeing me as the gay David Letterman. After all, if you look at Letterman and you look at Leno, look at me. I'm much prettier. And I have great hair. <laughs> so I wrote that. Oh, my God. Yes, whack. Maybe 10 minutes is too long. You know, when we talk about that he conceived stuff, let's talk about all the stuff he's conceived in the past. Remember the uh, live play picture of Dorian Gray that mm -hmm. went nowhere? Right. The uh, food. Um, oh, right. Tasty yeah, travel. <laughs> Tasty travel. You forgot Mr. Paganini's. <laughs> the Leo DeLion musical. <laughs> Leo DeLion. <laughs> kind of show and we'll and have our first meeting. the network is launching when? Uh, February 2005. <laughs> gay network. Is, is Viacom putting on a gay network? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they've talked about it. I don't know that they have a launch date or anything. Who, who, who knows what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It won't include Mark. <laughs> so I hope they include me. I would, I would love the opportunity. I am the gay Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Hey, yeah, Vin. Hey. Hey. Who's it? Howard. Oh, hey, Howard. Um, you have to play the Michael Jackson song that Mark Harris did on that tape that you have. Let me see if I have it. Oh, my God. It's so He starts off doing like a parody of it, but he ends up like seducing Michael Jackson. It says Mark sings to his daughter. You think that's it? I think, uh, yeah. It's, it's right. called Oh, Michael. Let me see. <laughs> oh, did you ever hear some of my songs? It's horrible. No, I, actually, I haven't heard It's them. a good thing, DJ. You will never hear one of his Rebecca. songs. Rebecca! I mean, you know, there's a reason. He really knows how to relate to his kid. Rebecca! The show's called Life with Father. Oh. That's that's the whole premise of his radio show. Is that what he'll be doing in here today? Yes. Exactly. It's him and his daughter, who who is his co-host, and then, like, his daughter's friends, boyfriends, that also like him. Like, she's got boyfriends... I don't know Mark if I, like him. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sit through that. Uh, what about Mark's love life? We're only concentrating on the daughters. Yeah, it would be great if one of his boyfriends called him with a daughter was there. That that I would listen to. <laughs> and my best friend hasn't heard your music yet. You never heard my songs. <laughs> I've never heard your songs about Michael Jackson. And she never <gasps> will. What did you What did you write well, about Michael Jackson? Well, let's take. Why is she screaming? That that's their thing. The scream is their signature. What? I think she's trying to make him shut up. I know way too much about this. She screams because... Yeah, she screams every, like, three or four minutes, and then he screams. When I point at you, scream. <laughs> and then I'll scream. That's his we'll all scream. <laughs> oh, I scream. Pause, and I want you to listen to this Michael Jackson song. Okay. <laughs> oh, my. Listen to this music. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Michael, oh, Michael, don't bother, boys. <laughs> oh, Michael, oh. This is, to, uh, this is to show the audience that Mark, while homosexual, is down on Michael Jackson because he's with underage boys. Right. He wants yeah, to show... He ends up seducing him in the song. He wants everyone to understand that he doesn't go with underage boys. He knows the line. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good homo. <laughs> he's a good homo. <laughs> Michael, they're not your toys. You made some real damn awful noise. In bed when you... Is that a steel drum? <laughs> yeah, it could be. What is that thing? That instrument, that, that gay instrument? Yeah, it's like sort of keyboard steel drum. That's the that nauseous. Swing on some snacks and tickling front and back. So, oh, Michael... <laughs> Poor kid is sitting there laughing. Oh, man. Yeah. She should just hit him. That should be their thing. Now she should be screaming. <laughs> oh, Michael, don't even scratch. Imagine that's your dad. Like, you could either just totally ignore him and never see him again, or because you want a father, buy into his crap. And, uh, 
and go along with it, I guess. Live in a nice house. What are you going to do? But high school's such a tough age. I mean, you just go, you know, my dad, by the way, that's my daddy's gay, you know. How old is that kid? She's 18. So oh, she's no. been through it all. Yeah, but I mean, do you just go, oh, hey, this is Is she dad. like someone who's gone through a war? Like, is she in shell shock? <laughs> but I wonder, do you tell people up front that your dad's gay, or do you just let them come to the house and let them figure it out? I don't think they have to tell anybody. <laughs> Actually, how long are you, you going to take to figure it out? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Victor Mature. Hey, my, your dad's my gay. My dad's a bit different. <laughs> mm. Yes? He's a strict father. Oh, I bet he is. I don't and spare the rod. Your hands up. <laughs> your you know what? I'd kill myself if this was my father. <laughs> you I couldn't would, get through it. I couldn't. I would just kill myself. <laughs> I would kill myself. Oh, I'm forget not kidding. It. The heroin could not get into my veins quick enough. <laughs> I know. To forget. Quite kinky, it's true. <laughs> Molestation's not new. And not because he's gay, but because he's odd. It's embarrassing. Oh, Rebecca, you... take the shotgun out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. No. Oh, oh, thinking, she goes on. She's probably oh. thinking, like, how did my dad get it up to create me? Right. That's you know? what I'm thinking. Yeah, how am I here? <laughs> yeah, how, how did that work? I'm a miracle. How did my mom get duped into a relationship with this guy? <laughs> What's wrong with my mother that did, she didn't know he was dead? <laughs> oh. Michael, if you're planning a comeback, we could do it together. <laughs> oh, a song, that is. And I could dance with you. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to lead, Michael. The snack you eat is so delicious. <laughs> but little boys, you shouldn't wish to touch. It's much too much. No. Uh wow. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the, the snack you eat is delicious. <laughs> the snack That's you eat drum. is delicious. I wish the FBI would investigate him. <laughs> Why are you taking my DNA crime. samples? <laughs> what, Vin? We, we should arrest him for future crimes. Like <laughs> yeah, like that, that Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> and you know what the weird thing about him is? He's very, very, very pro-Bush. Very supportive of the president. No. I would have guessed. I'm very supportive. All boys are dying. So yeah. well, that's how he surprises you. Yeah. <laughs> Elton John called Mark a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Logo was going to be listening today, the cable network. Oh, I have uh, I have meeting with Logo. I conceive shows. <laughs> like E, the E network. They will run his radio show. Right. All right, man. All right, man. Have fun. Right. I'll be listening. Later. Okay. Mark me... conceives shows, but he never gives birth. No. It's like he'll always pick the creepier word when given a choice. Instead of creating shows, he conceives shows. Right? Yeah. But if there's a choice in creepy, he'll yeah. go for the creepy. He'll always go creepy. Yeah. And you know, him and Vinny are on the phone probably an average of two or three hours a week. I know. Vinny can't get enough of him. <laughs> I made some jingles for him, though. You got those? No? Guess not. Uh. Mark Harris jingles. I don't know what's in any of these CD players. Oh. He loves Van Ass and Butterbill Bass, the Mark Harris Radio Show. <laughs> <laughs> That's the signature sound. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's a steel drum. He banged Martha Ray, and he is gay, the Mark Harris Radio Show. <laughs> Whenever you hear that sound, Mark Harris is on the air. <laughs> He's the homo on the radio, the Mark Harris radio show. <laughs> <laughs> That's his signature. There's that sound. You know what's coming next. Not Mark that. Harris. <laughs> that sound isn't part of my repertoire. <laughs> the airways are no longer safe. Are you too virgin? <laughs> He loves to yap, and he sings like crap. The Mark Harris Radio Show. Yeah. <laughs> and then he can go into his rap, you know. That disgusting hack could only mean one thing. Mark Harris. <laughs> the Mark Harris Radio Show. Well, this is Mark Harris, and I'm signing off for Life with Father. And remember, Rebecca and I are going to take all your calls and give you answers to the best that we can answer you, of course. This is radio. 
And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. If you're wondering where Rebecca is, believe it or not, she had to go to school. It's about time. Stay tuned. He loves Van Ass and Barnum and Bass, the Mark Harris Radio Show. You know, I'm going to stick to a very strict 10 minute format because well, please I can't take more than 10 minutes I gave him the f I told him five to ten so if you go at five or six you can pull that <laughs> okay off. five minutes where is he gonna sit he's gonna sit in your seat so no, we have a whole we have a whole set up for him okay we got a whole set I've, I've cut it down to five minutes based on this tape <laughs> he's losing time as we go yeah if I listen any more of this tape the whole bit's out <laughs> well you could always go over and be a guest right I mean, I'll be a guest on the show. Are you virgin? No. Are you virgin? <laughs> Are you girls drug addict? <laughs> Rebecca went to school. Now we can talk penis. <laughs> Forget that father crap. <laughs> In fact, maybe you ought to go on as a guest and tell Rebecca some of the stuff he's been up to. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm sure she'd be interested. Okay, if you stay tuned. I'm sure that you'll hear much more on Rebecca's teenage complaints and her dirty laundry. Oh, I mean laundry, all right. Her panties, her bra, her jeans, her shirts, everything hanging around dirty. I'm the one that has to put them in a machine, and it's not that easy, believe me. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> and I do mean laundry. He's the home on the radio. The Mark Harris Radio Show. Her panty, bra. <laughs> I was getting into a weird thing, too. Her unmentionables. Her unmentionables. First I have to sniff them, then I launder. <laughs> I have to put them in the machine of wash. <laughs> and then I have to put them on the board of ironing. <laughs> I have to throw them in the agitator. Well, I know you have a friend here. Yes. And, uh... My best friend. Oh, your best friend. My best friend. Excuse me, at 17, I had a few, too. Uh, well... No, no. No, I didn't? One. Me? No, oh, I'm talking about me. And you only have one best friend? Let's talk about me. Your father's a narcissist. He had a few best friends in high school. Oh, yes. Best friend? I have two, but she's more of a best friend. Okay, well, let's bring your friend in. You want to uh, call her in? Sure. Come on in, DJ. I am DJ. <laughs> yeah, tell us a little about yourself. Um. Mm, tell us a little about yourself. My best friend was BJ. <laughs> 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 18, 17, 16, hmm. Oh. <laughs> Me and the Scoutmaster. <laughs> hey, Dan, you're on the air. Hey, now. Good morning, Good morning Robin. Good morning. Hey, hey you're not really going to let this guy on, are you? <laughs> Well, your your phone connection's kind of bad, but yeah, I'm letting him. You see, we were sitting in a meeting, and Vinny said to me, "Mark wants to do. You know, he feels that he could really be your replacement." But that says a lot about Vinny. And I said, "You know what? That's funny. We got to let him on. Let's hear what he's going to do." But you know, even listening to this short little tape, I don't know that we could last thirty seconds. I mean, really, three and a half in, Howard, you're going to be. You got to go because I said to him, "I'll keep quiet during it," but. I don't think I can. Three and a half seconds? Is that I meant minutes, but you yeah. might be right, Robin. Three and a half seconds. <laughs> Unbelievable. Because I did promise him that he would get, you know, because he kept asking me, is Howard going to interrupt? And I said, no, no, Mark, it's your time. Will Howard interrupt? I have a rhythm. Yeah, I'm putting him on. Uh, that's too bad, man. Sorry. Don't put the satellite. A lot of people might have to tune out. <laughs> I don't blame you if you do, by the way. We will understand. Just be glad he's not your dad. The Mark Harris Radio Show. 17. Ah. I'm Becca's best friend. And can we tell the school's over? I was just going to ask, how <laughs> well or not well are you doing in school? Well, I'm doing pretty good. My feeling about graduating is hopefully Rebecca will get her diploma. I will. Okay, but if she didn't, for example, and she... Wow, it's almost impossible to sit through. You know what? I couldn't listen to the show if, if it were, I were in the house and I were like the housekeeper. It's interesting to them, the two of them. If it was President Bush talking to his kids, yeah. I couldn't listen to this. Yeah, right. If if you were a housekeeper and you walked by the room and you heard this, you'd say, you know what, those idiots are talking again. I'm leaving. I gotta go. <laughs> I don't know how Becca can listen to this. 
I mean, even the best friend's got to be bored at this point. So I, get, I get the feeling Mark doesn't see these kids that much. You think? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. The, they sound like nice kids. I'm sure the wife takes care of them. Right, but she's <laughs> responsible for how they're turning out. Yeah, and Chauncey, you're on the air. Hey, how it is going? Hey, Wait, Chance, did you happen to see Bob Dylan on 60 Minutes last night? Yeah, I watched I the did, whole. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. That, was that bizarre? Mm. No, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, it was I good. had to rewind well, it and watch it again. I loved it not, so much. You know what I thought was weird though? Did you notice that when he he answers questions, it's like he's singing his songs? I thought that he was. Uh, I think he's a very sad guy, Bob Dylan, and miserable, uh, miserable really. Uh, kind of, kind of just sad. But I, I mean, I enjoyed the interview. I thought he was. I, I thought he was kind of cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I thought he was kind of cool the way and he's he had like. And he some interesting yeah, things to say. Do you think it's an act? Yeah. Do you think it's an act? How no. can someone be that miserable and unhappy? No, I think he's a cool dude. I mean, like he, he was like saying, I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm just a good dude, man. Everyone's carrying They're on. Just songs. Just songs, <laughs> man. Songs didn't mean anything in the '60s. They didn't mean anything to anyone. No, I mean, and he gets that they mean something, but uh, he's he even. I thought the coolest thing was he goes, you know. I can't write songs anymore. I, I'm not good at it. And he goes, I don't know who that guy was that wrote those songs, yeah. but I'm not that guy. I can't do it anymore. Right. He said it was magical. Yeah. yeah. My, my favorite part was when he said people come to his house and want to talk about organic farming. <laughs> yeah. Do you know anything about it? Like, no, not a thing. I don't know anything. <laughs> Nothing. I, thought, I don't know. I like Bob Dylan. I, and I'm not, a, like, I'm not one of these mean, maniacal Bob Dylan fans who, you know, listens to his records all the time. I, I like some of his songs, but... I thought he was cool in that interview. And I thought that a lot of the things he said were very, very honest. It's just kind of sad, though, that you can have that kind of success and be that much of a of a pop icon and then hate life and hate everything so much. I don't know. He hates everything. Yeah. He just, he's just one of those miserable kind of guys who... Well, um, he's been tortured all of his life. <laughs> who, um, well, he's been tortured all of his life. <laughs> it's cool that he admitted... That he just wanted to be like Elvis, you know? He didn't want to be some prophet well, he said he, or... Well, he could be Elvis. I thought that was interesting. He said, I, could, I couldn't be what they expect me to be, but I definitely could be Elvis. And I thought it was a good interview, too. I mean, I thought that, that dude did a good job, whatever Ed his name Bradley? Is. Ed Bradley. With the earring. He gets to interview Bob Dylan because he has an earring. You know, it's a shame, though. You know he probably spent about two hours with him, and you'll hear about 15 minutes of it. Yeah, I would like to hear more of the interview. Yeah, I was yeah. sad that there wasn't more of it. It was kind of short, as far yeah. as I was concerned. I wanted more. And, yeah. you know, Bob Dylan sat down with Ed Bradley 20 years. He's never done an interview. He sits down. It's a three-minute interview. It's like, well, gee, I wonder what we missed. All right. Hey, listen, Chauncey, i got to go take a break. Okay. All right, man. We'll be back right after these words. We're going to do a tribute to my late wife, who really is the great Martha Ray. And may she always be remembered as the true American she was. Great talent. I tell you, one thing, when I would sing, Martha was not all for that, I have to be honest with you. She kept telling me I was a comic. She said, you might be the first good-looking comic. That's not the Gerber, baby. That's Martha. Yes, 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 yes,